Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you. It's good to see some familiar faces out there. Welcome to the City of Rochester Hills Fire Department Headquarters. My name is Bill Cook. I'm the Assistant Chief, and it's my honor to stand in front of you today, along with the members of our organization and with our elected officials, to welcome you here for a day of remembrance. Today is a day of tribute for those that lost their lives and for those that gave their lives. We remember and we will never forget. I thank you all for being here with us this morning, for taking a moment to pause and reflect upon the events that took place 20 years ago today, on September 11th, 2001, the day that has changed our lives forever. Four significant events occurred the morning of September 11th, 2001. At 8.46 a.m., American Airlines Flight 11, with a crew of 11 and 76 passengers, was flown into the North Tower of the World Trade Center by terrorists. The tower remained standing for 102 minutes, then collapsed at 10.28 a.m. At 9.03 a.m., United States, sorry, United Airlines Flight 175, with a crew of nine, and 51 passengers was flown into the South Tower of the World Trade Center by terrorists. This tower remained standing for 56 minutes and collapsed before the North Tower at 9.59 a.m. It's estimated that 13 to 15,000 people were evacuated from both towers before they collapsed. At 9.37 a.m., American Airlines Flight 77 with a crew of six and 53 passengers was flown into the Pentagon by terrorists, creating a separate disaster in Arlington, Virginia. And at 10.03 a.m., United Airlines Flight 93, with a crew of seven and 33 passengers, crashed into the ground near Shanksville, Pennsylvania, after passengers on the flight attempted to restrain terrorists. All of us old enough have memories of this day. I will never forget the image of President Bush's face as he was being told the news at a school appearance in Sarasota, Florida. The emotions that I had the first time I saw the plane crashing into the North Tower and the pain that I felt knowing that this was not a survivable event. Then the realization that big planes just don't hit buildings and that this was an act of terrorism. Almost 3,000 victims lost their lives in these four attacks. These events created chaos, panic, and terror to the likes that many have never experienced. Firefighters, emergency service personnel, and citizens were tasked with many situations they've never dreamed of having to face. They responded with speed, courage, and determination. They walked out of the ashes, then walked right back in. Working past exhaustion, these individuals, knowing their brothers and sisters of humanity had perished, were able to maintain composure and complete the task at hand. First responders make life and death decisions each day for the safety and security of the citizens that they're sworn to protect. These decisions are not made for their families, sorry, not made on their own benefit, but for the innocent, for your families, friends, loved ones, and visitors of our community. Our first responders here today are no different than those who made the choice to serve and protect the city of New York. These first responders that are standing behind you continue to make the choice in every decision they make, putting their communities first to help maintain the quality of life in the cities and townships that they serve. Today we are here to honor all the first responders that paid the supreme sacrifice. Those who worked through the stress of these attacks and to celebrate them in our memories. No matter how hard we try, words simply cannot express the horror and shock that we feel over what took place in this nation on Tuesday, September 11th, 2001. The 9-11 attacks in our country will go down in our history as a day to remember. Let this memorial here at our fire station headquarters provide us with a daily reminder to take nothing for granted 
to cherish time with our friends and families, count our blessings, and respect the freedoms that we have as fellow Americans. Now, if you will please rise for the posting of our colors by the Rochester Hills Fire Department Honor Guard. Please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by Anna Maria Scheidemantel from Stony Creek High School. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. All oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof. That our flag was still there. Oh, say as that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, and please be seated. Now I'd like to take a moment to thank our elected officials for attending this morning. Uh, Rochester Hills Mayor Brian Barnett, Council President Ryan Deal, members Mr. Hetrick and Mr. Walker, thank you for coming this morning. We appreciate your, your commitment to prioritizing public safety in our community. Now with the opening remarks, I'd like to welcome Rochester Hills Mayor Brian Barnett to the podium. Good morning. While well, a somber morning, every morning we wake up, blessed to live in this country, is a good morning. So I say again, good morning. Join with me, if you will, in thanking that beautiful rendition of our national anthem, uh, and by thanking uh, my friend Anna Marie. Great job. <laughs> On behalf of the Rochester Hills City Council, some of them gathered here today, and the 76,000 residents of the city of Rochester Hills, it's my privilege to welcome you to Fire Station One for our ceremony today to remember the events of 9-11. We're here today to unite again uh, as Americans on a day that now is known as Patriot Day. And we remember the events and the heroes of 20 years ago. Of course, you know much has been written about this particular anniversary, almost to the minute of the things that happened in New York, Pennsylvania, and in Virginia 20 years ago this morning. It's hard to imagine before my boys that are now a junior and a senior in high school were even born. Shocking to think that no one across this country in high school 
was alive when these events happened and remember them firsthand like you and I do. Exactly where we were that morning, what we were thinking, who we were with as the events unfolded horrifically in front of us. Remember when George W. Bush, our president, took to the Oval Office that evening, 20 years ago, to address the nation, you may recall his words. Today our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist attacks. The victims were in airplanes or in offices, secretaries, businessmen and businesswomen, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. The pictures of airplanes flying into buildings, fires burning, huge structures collapsing have filled us with disbelief, terrible sadness, and a quiet, unyielding anger. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat, but they have failed because our country is strong. He was right. 20 years later, yet so vivid in our memory, our country is still strong. We close our eyes and we can see the pictures on TV and the disbelief in the members of the media as they covered those historic events in real time. We remember the way our world was turned upside down that morning. We remember. Thinking about this piece of steel over my shoulder, 20 years ago this morning, it stood south side of Manhattan in the Twin Towers, protecting and holding up that building for just a few more minutes. That piece of steel. We remember the evil and violence that took that steel down. We remember with heavy hearts the thousands of people who lost their lives in the attacks. We remember the fear. What could happen next? But we also remember the bravery, the camaraderie, the determination, and the way we as a nation and even as a community overcame. We remember our fellow Americans who became heroes that day. We remember the brave first responders, the passengers of Flight 93, the civilians who compelled themselves into action, who demonstrated incredible character and courage. Twenty years ago, these resolute and selfless Americans rose up to remind us about the best of America. We remember the displays of patriotism as every home and business rushed to display the American flag as big and as bold as they could. As members of Congress, Democrats and Republicans alike gathered on our Capitol steps and after observing a moment of silence spontaneously broke into singing God Bless America together. We remember uniting in support of one another and of those on the front lines. On a national level, those same Democrats and Republicans in office, while they may have disagreed about policy and the direction of our country, were all in agreement about supporting the brave men and women who protect and served the United States of America. We remember. For the past 20 years and for the next 100 years, we will remember. So on days like today when we are gathered here and I want to thank all of you for taking some time on a beautiful Saturday morning. It is a call, not to be sad, but to remember the very worst and the very best of what this country has seen, the victims and the heroes. It's a call to remember the grit, resilience, and resolve that continue to shape the American spirit. As President Harry Truman once said, America was not built on fear, was not built on fear. America was built on courage, on imagination, and on an unbeatable determination to do the job at hand. Americans are brave. They're innovative. And we don't give up. We countered fear and hate with stronger forces, with strength, with courage, with compassion, with unity, and with determination. And ultimately, even 20 years later, with hope. We stand together and we remember. And we continue to take what was meant for evil and use it for good. We will always, in this city, honor the heroes of 9-11 and remember those whose lives were cut short. We will never be the same and certainly 
never forget. On behalf of the city of Rochester Hills and our residents, thank you for making this important enough to be here today. May God bless you, our families, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. We'd now like to welcome President Deal to the podium for his remarks. Good morning, and I want to thank all of you for being here today. My name is Ryan Deal. I'm the president of the Rochester Hills City Council, and I'm joined here today by my fellow council members, uh, David Walker and Dale Hetrick. For all, for all Americans, the phrase 9-11 evokes a special meaning. It represents a point in our country's history when the world as we knew it changed forever. So every year, it's fitting that on September 11th, Americans gather to honor the memory of the nearly 3,000 people who died that day and to honor those heroes who survived. It is, important, it is also important to remember what that day revealed about the American spirit. You know, when I was a kid, I watched a lot of uh, Mr. Rogers, and I remember once Mr. Rogers once said, when I was a young boy, I would see scary things in the news, and my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people helping. On September 11th, we saw ordinary human beings who were living their ordinary lives, reacting with extraordinary heroism when, without warning and in an instant, they were thrown face to face with the unthinkable. We saw firefighters, police officers, EMT, paramedics, security guards choose duty and loyalty and self-sacrifice in the face of death to help all to help others. Today marks 20 years since the events of 9-11, and the legacy of that day that endures is the heroism and bravery of those Americans. Most importantly, the kindness that reflects the true American spirit, to put aside our own needs and to look out for others. The heroes of 9-11 are an example and a reminder to us all of how people can really make a difference. And we gather today to honor that legacy. Thank you all for taking some time to be here today. May God continue to bless you, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, President Deal, for your remarks. Now we'd like to welcome Fire Department Chaplain Deacon John Wright from St. Irenaeus Church. Thank God for this beautiful day. We've had, uh, we can count on God to help us through difficult times. As he said, I'm Deacon John Wright and it's an honor to be here and remember. A short reading from the Gospel of Luke. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they asked him to carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, people of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and your children the Gospel of the Lord. It is not uncommon as we read scripture passages to think about the quiet person that is oftentimes in the background of that reading and today we discover that person is Simon, a Cyrenian, who was not a key part of the life of Jesus before this event. However, he takes on the task of helping this person named Jesus by carrying his cross up the hill. There was no sign of him stepping back and avoiding the task. Somehow, he knows he should find a way to help him as he quietly came forward to do so. That may not have been a simple task. In Luke's Gospel, we hear the following instruction from Jesus which Simon followed even though he didn't hear it 
the first time, Jesus had said this, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Simon did that. This morning we honor the firefighters, paramedics, and first responders from Rochester Hills, and those we remember from 20 years ago today at the Trade Center, who have taken up the cross and find the presence of Jesus within those they serve and they help them. They listen to Jesus, and we can fondly remember Simon the Cyrenian. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing on us. This is from the Saint Mother Teresa. There is a light in this world, a healing spirit more powerful than any darkness we may encounter. We sometimes lose sight of this force when there is suffering. The pain we witness can be overwhelming. Then, suddenly, the Spirit of God will emerge through the lives of people who hear a call and answer with extraordinary love. We all keep praying that as many have answered the call and continue to answer the call, you bring the light of the Spirit with your love for those you serve. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Wright. <clears throat> the signal 5555 has been used in the city of New York firehouses since 1870. It signals the death, generally, of a colleague, and it tells firefighters to lower the American flag to half staff. Before computers, dispatchers communicated with firehouses using a series of rings it gave the location of a fire by a code assigned to the nearest intersection. A house watchman had to monitor the bells and decipher the message on paper. These days, a watchman monitors a computer screen, which gives a code for the intersection, the address, and the type of incident. The bells have been disabled, but a 5555 signal is still used. To this day, the code still has meaning. The dispatcher will say on the radio, the signal 5555 has been transmitted and is with regret, regret that the department announces the death of a firefighter. Today, the Rochester Hills Fire Department will sound the signal of 5555 in honor of the members of the City of New York Fire Department, the New York City Police Department, and the Port Authority of New York in New Jersey. The 411 emergency service personnel who lost their lives 20 years ago today. Rest easy, brothers and sisters. Now will you all please rise for the honoring of the colors and the playing of taps by Mr. David Urig, the director of bands from Rochester High School.
Thank you. Please be seated. Now I'd like to introduce Battalion Chief Jason Murray for the closing remarks. 20 years ago today, 2,996 individuals representing 90 countries lost their lives on September 11, 2001. This was a day of great sadness for our country, but especially weighed heavy on the hearts of emergency services personnel. As the sun set on September 11, 2001, 343 New York City firefighters, 23 New York City police officers, 37 Port Authority police officers, and eight private EMS workers had paid the supreme sacrifice while operating at Box 8087 Vesey and Church Streets, also known as the World Trade Center. So many years after the dust settled in Lower Manhattan, thousands of volunteers, rescue workers, and New York City residents are still feeling the effects of 9-11, not only in their hearts, but in their minds and bodies as well. Since 2001, more than 200 firefighters have died due to 9-11 related conditions. On September 11, 2001, the FDNY responded with hundreds of members to the epicenter of the disaster at the World Trade Center. Brother and sister firefighters ascended the stairwell of the Twin Towers. Knowing that several floors above, a fire raged out of control and hundreds of occupants were trapped. Systems designed to help protect the building and its occupants were inoperable. And these firefighters found themselves in the middle of a fight with the odds stacked against them. But they continued to push on, knowing very well they may never return. I carry a challenge coin with me. I've given it to some of you guys out here. It has a quote on it from Albert Einstein. I think most of you can relate to what it says. Only a life lived in the service of others is worth living. I take that to heart. I'd like to take a couple minutes to tell you about just a few brave men who gave their lives in the service of others on September 11th, 2001. Right after these guys leave. Good. They were fathers and sons like Joseph J. Angelini Sr. and his son Joseph Jr who were both FDNY firefighters. Joe Sr. was assigned to Rescue Company Number 1 and was the most veteran firefighter in the city of New York. He was tough, and even with 40 years on the job, still rode the back step just like everyone else. His 38-year-old son, Joe Jr., worked on Ladder Company Number 4 on 48th Street. He had been on the job for seven years. Neither of them survived a Twin Towers collapse. They were senior chief officers like the chief of the department, Peter Gancy. By the time Gancy had arrived, the South Tower had struck, was struck by more than five terrorists who had hijacked United Airlines Flight 175, slamming that jet between floors 77 and 85 of the building's south facade. Gancy and his men set up command posts where they oversaw the rescue efforts. Then, at 9.59 a.m., the South Tower collapsed. Gancy and his men ran into the basement of another World Trade Center building for shelter. After a few minutes, they found an exit and dug their, dug their way out of the debris of the South Tower. Chris Gancy, the son of Chief Peter Gancy, is now a battalion chief at FDNY. He wrote, the men who were there with my dad remember seeing him shouting orders and picking guys up and pushing them out of the area. Everyone thought he was headed out too, but when they looked back, they saw him heading right back into the chaos. He would not leave his men inside. Chief Gancy then set up command posts in front of the North Tower and used a multi-channel radio that he had found to continue directing the evacuation effort. Thousands of civilians poured out, but it was a race against time. At 10.28 a.m., the North Tower collapsed. 
killing those still inside the building and those immediately outside of it, along with Gansey and his aides at the command post. They were firefighters, like firefighter Danny Seurer of Engine Company 216, an 18-year veteran who was one of the first arriving responders to the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001. Engine Company 216 was setting up near the South Tower upon arrival. The scene was horrific and chaotic. Firefighters were in both towers trying to evacuate people, while victims trapped above the, above the impact zone jumped out of buildings rather than burned to death, a fall that took 10 seconds. Ten seconds. FDNY Captain Paul Conlin recalled that firefighter Sewer was just feet below feet behind him when Danny was struck violently by a victim who had jumped from the South Tower. Seven firefighters came to Sewer's aid. They immediately, immediately took their fallen brother to Bellevue Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Just moments after, the South Tower collapsed. Danny and his fellow firefighters would have been in that tower if he had not been injured. They were holy men, like FDNY Chaplain Father Michael Judge. On September 11, 2001, upon learning the World Trade Center had been hit by the first of two jetliners, Judge rushed to the site. He was met by Rudolph Giuliani, the mayor of New York City, who asked him to pray for the city and its victims. Judge prayed over bodies lying in the streets. He then entered the lobby of the World Trade Center North Tower, where an emergency command post had been organized. There, he continued to offer aid and prayers for the rescuers, the injured, and the dead. When the neighboring South Tower collapsed at 9.59 a.m., debris went flying through the North Tower lobby, killing many inside, including Judge. Shortly after his death, an NYPD lieutenant, two firefighters, an FDNY EMT, and one civilian bystander carried Judge's body out of the North Tower, shortly before the towers collapsed at 10.28 a.m., and laid him upon the altar at St. Peter's Catholic Church. Chief Edward Croker of the FDNY wrote shortly after 9-11, firefighters are going to get killed. When they join the department, they face that fact. When someone becomes a firefighter, their greatest act of bravery has been accomplished. What they do after that is in the line of work. They were not thinking of getting killed when they went where death lurked. They went there to put the fire out and got killed. Firefighters do not regard themselves as heroes because they do what the business requires. Today, the Rochester Hills Fire Department affirms to those who gave the ultimate sacrifice 20 years ago today. Rest easy, brothers and sisters. Your tour is over and you have been called home. Please rise as Alistair Hill will play Amazing Grace. Detail. Attention.